fellow Til lovers, welcome to the YouTube channel of Telacrose. I'm Dala Nyakate, founder of Telacrose, and today this is our actuality number two. We will be talking about all news about tea, anything, everything regarding tea will be in this actuality episode. So bear with me, don't forget to subscribe and like, or like and subscribe, however you do it. Don't forget to follow all our uh, news and activities on our YouTube channel right here, on our Instagram, Till I Cruise All Together, T with an S in the end, and on Facebook as well. Okay, so I know it's been a very long time since our last video, about two or three weeks. A lot has been going on, especially our pop-up tea bar in Paris. That was a really, really great weekend. For three days we were in Paris, we had this beautiful pop-up tea bar where we were serving cocktails, hot teas, you know, little sweets and treats, and it was really beautiful. And it was really great meeting all of you, our Parisian friends. So thank you so much to all of you who, who came. And congratulations to the winners of our contest. Congratulations to you guys. Bravo, félicitations. Et à très bientôt. We also have a video coming very soon about uh, the, the whole pop-up experience we had in Paris. Um, this is a video that will be professionally done. It's in the process of being edited right now. It's being done by Pierre Cissé and Pierre Cissé. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not be going crazy. It's really the name of the the two of the journalist and he the assistant doing. And I also filmed a few behind the scenes just for you to to see the 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 crazy preparation that goes be behind all of that. I tried my best to film as much as I could, but then, you know, as I was in the midst of preparing everything and being a bit stressed, uh, sometimes I forgot. You also have, uh, you also get to see my mother, who's literally the star of the whole show. She is, yeah, she's the show herself. Um, very funny, very entertaining. So yeah, looking forward to sharing all of this with you guys. In the meantime, let's get right into it with this, uh, this actuality number two jingle. I'm not sure I have an actuality jingle, but yes. <laughs> so the first actuality is from Mirror, the Mirror.co.uk. So teapot sitting on Brit's living room shelf sells for whooping one million pounds. So basically, the story is about a guy who happened to have this uh, beautiful, no, I mean, not really beautiful, like just an old teapot, you know, that was given from generation to generation in his family. And it was just, you know, there, just an antique st standing there. And basically, you know, he, he, he started having some doubts. He was like, well, you know, this, this teapot has been in the family for quite some time now. I'm wondering if it doesn't have a, a value of some sort, you know? So he called this expert uh, in, you know, he was initially thinking, okay, this might go for a few, a few thousand pounds. The expert uh, quote, he said, as the owner handed me the teapot for an opinion, my heart missed a beat. As I turned it over and saw the beautifully drawn blue seal mark of Xianlong, my pronunciation is okay, I realized immediately that I was handling a piece made for the emperor himself. You were holding for so much time a teapot that was literally made for an emperor. Like this is this is pretty big, right? And also, when I see this kind of stories, it just makes me wonder how does this teapot even even get there? You know how how does such a an incredible piece and with such meaning and value just ends up sitting there on somebody somebody's living room and not in China? You know, like in in the UK, how does that even happen? So he says, the battle for the teapot between 10 telephone beaters took 10 minutes. So you mean to tell me that in 10 minutes, oh my gosh, this guy became a millionaire in 10 minutes. 
wow isn't that everybody's dream to literally like you know be waking up and just seeing this old piece of whatever it is in your house and just being like you know what let me just let me just have some expert you know getting the value of this and then learning that it's <laughs> just a million pounds worth oh 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 well never happened to me but oh well actuality number two we have our dear Boris Johnson apparently his tea making skills were highly criticized um, this is an article from the standard.co.uk and the title is Boris Johnson's tea making skills called into question as he is filmed making brew in election broadcast the Prime Minister was criticized for not taking the tea bag out okay I, I okay this is bad okay with some saying the technique might even lose the conservatives some votes when the country goes to the poll on December 12. Okay, now I okay. Now you guys are going way too far with this. You need to chill. I understand how tea, how important tea is for you guys, for all of us actually here on this channel, especially. <laughs> but you guys need to chill. I mean, I mean, I won't state any political opinions on here. Uh, I'm not trying to defend anyone. Uh, I'm really not. Believe me, you. <laughs> but I think. I think we have bigger problems than how the PM Prime Minister uh, brews his cup. I mean, honestly, I mean, at this point, who really cares? Who really cares? In the midst of Brexit, is that really all you're focused on? And then the nerve of saying this might get him to lose some votes. Okay, so that's all it took for you to... <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. This is amazing. This is crazy. Yes, and apparently also really bad. So he even had the nerve to... Not only did he leave the tea bag in there, but then he had the nerve to add milk on top of it without even removing the tea bag ever and then not stirring it. And who's drinking this cup up? He is! Let him have a disgusting tea! Why not? Oh god. I, it's just... It, okay, this article just really... I, I was very baffled and confused by it, but I felt like sharing it because it was so ridiculous. I really don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. So, there you go. Uh, but okay, thank you. Was it standard? Anyway, then we have another article. So this one made me laugh, but it's bad because it's not funny. It is not funny because that was not intentional and that was uh, that's something that happened to this person without this person wanting this thing to happen, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's that's not so funny. But apparently, so there was this guy, okay, I just need to find where that was. So that was in the US. There's a guy, he goes to the to McDonald's, to McDonald's, the way they say it, and next thing you know, so he asks for a tea. You know but then when he asked this tea he asked for extra lemon and apparently when he asked for extra lemon okay right now it seems that this story is a bit confusing and you don't really know where it's going but bear with me so he asks for extra lemon and apparently that was the drive that's right drive in drive through whatever and the guy the mcdonald's guy is looking at him like hmm, extra lemon you know and repeating it like extra lemon the guy apparently was like, yeah, <laughs> I like my tea with extra lemon, please. So there comes a guy, he hands him, allegedly, allegedly, <laughs> he hands him his, uh, his tea with extra lemon. And next thing you know, um, well, that's what at least this article from Vice.com is telling us. He claims that he got high from McDonald's tea that allegedly had weed in it. He goes to work and then he realizes that he's really not feeling great and he he realizes that he starts to, you know, to have the symptoms of someone who's high. And one thing that's interesting, so that's a 24-year-old uh, man who, who experienced allegedly this uh, strange McDonald's adventure and he apparently never consumed any any weed or any sort of drugs in his life so obviously when he when you know he had a few sips 
of this very uh, special brew, he immediately started getting, you know, the well, not feeling so great. So he went to work and he had to inform the, then, you know, his management, his dad, he called his dad, he tried to call the police as well. So he did call the police, but then the police was like, what? <laughs> Excuse us, what? So apparently, yes, it took it. It took him some time to try, you know, to convince the police of what was really happening to him, you know. But then eventually, the police came and they examined the drink, and indeed, the drink had uh, several pouches of marijuana inside of it. Apparently, and they, you know, they went on to find out that he might have said he probably, well, this extra lemon thing was probably interpreted as a code. You know, by this marginalized person to put the marijuana in it. I know! How crazy is that? Like, he, the poor guy was just asking for extra lemon in his sweet tea and he ends up getting high, going to work and having to explain to his boss that he's high because he drank tea and that he's, you know, sweet Mac McDonald's sweet tea was spiked like what the hell this is such such a nightmare such a, a, a headache so on to the next oh my gosh the next story you guys won't believe it so the there are several articles for this story one is from the dailymail.co.uk just reading the title actually it, it ugh, disgusts me so Domino's launches a bizarre mm -hmm, dessert Bubble tea pizza. Complete with black sugar pearls, honey, and cheese. This is Taiwan. Okay, now that makes a little more sense because I know that, you know, bubble tea there is sacred. That's where it's from. You know, I think it was one there like in the 80s. That's where it all began. So, okay, but just because it began there and just because it's sacred there and just because you are like the, the gods of bubble teas there doesn't mean that it, it should go with everything in any way possible. It, it just, you, how to explain that? Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it and you know i think this is a general rule that you can use in pretty much any area of your life let me read you a little extract of this article foodies can order the unusual pizza topping at domino stores across taiwan <sighs> customers who got their hands on a slice insisted it tastes better than it looks so you you mean to tell me that on top of that the pizza looks disgusting wow this is this is really bad. Despite its bizarre combination of cheese and honey coated base. So now see cheese and honey as a base. I could see this working because goat's cheese and honey is like, it's so simple. And yet I, I'm sorry, but this is very, it, it just works, you know, but not any type of cheese though. Goat's cheese, it has to be goat's cheese and honey. If this, what we're talking about, I could see this as a base. It's all right. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm reading the reviews right now as we speak, and you know what? They're they're surprisingly good. You know, I'm reading things like oh, OMG, it's incredible. They nailed it. Not joking. Everyone here needs to try this. The pizza is savory, but it's sweetened with honey on top. The boba on mushy. Okay, okay, that's not okay. You know what? Wow, I'm actually very surprised. You know what? I don't know. Well, I don't personally have Twitter, but if you guys have Twitter, please try to find this thread about the, the bubble tea pizza from Domino's in Taiwan. And please let me let me see what you see because what, let me know what you see because I'm only seeing pretty good reviews. You have some of them that are saying, oh, hail to the no, which I would be in that camp. <laughs> but um, yeah, what? Wait, does it really taste okay? Because it really looks weird to me. Yes, it does. I think there are some things that just shouldn't be associated. I'm sorry. But yeah, if you, if one of you guys happen to be in Taiwan right now and feels like trying a bubble tea Domino's pizza, please, please be my guest and let me know how this all went.